Hello, everybody. My name is Jimmy Smith. I am the head tutor and owner of West London Wine School. And welcome to another one of our grape varieties. This one is on the Hungarian grape variety Ferment. Uh, this is our advanced version. So this is ideal for those of you who are looking to broaden in-depth knowledge on this grape variety. Uh, ideal for WSET level three, and above, um, there's quite a bit of information. If you are studying level three, there is more information here than you need to know, but it is very good extra curricular activity. Uh, those of you studying diploma and other associated levels, you'll find this very, very interesting. Okay, so yes, ferment variety. Um, now, um, my social media handle, so the top one is at wine with Jimmy. This is my personal one for Twitter and Instagram. Please do get in touch if you have any comments or questions. At West London Wine is West London Wine School's uh, handle. That is based in Fulham in London, United Kingdom. Also South London Wine based in Streatham and Greenwich here in London in the United Kingdom as well. And then I have a wine bar down in South London called Streatham Wine House. So please, if you're in London, come and see us for a glass or a class. So let's, uh, let's get on with the grape variety ferment. As ever, we'll talk a little bit about um, history. We'll then go into what ferment is like in the vineyard, what it is like in the winery. Um, we're also going to add on a bit here about the famous ferment style, which is Tokai Aju and the process behind making it. And then we'll look at its geography, uh, where we find it in the world, and finally the style. Okay, so quite a bit of information here, but really uh, fascinating nonetheless. Um, we have documentation of the ferment variety as far back as the 16th century. Uh, and this is at the Hechulu uh, vineyard, and that is in Tokai. It was also mentioned very um, quickly after that. Well, I say very quickly, it was in the early 17th century, but um, about 20, -osh, 20 odd miles away in the Gieppu Valley, uh, which is near Erdobenye. Uh, and that's in the Zempleni Mountains, an area quite famous for forests and quite famous for the oak, uh, the gonch, which is used, the oak barrels used for maturing Tokai wines. Um, so we have really a, a 16th and then 17th century documentation that this variety is from this area. That's interesting and it's very important to understand because there have been many other um, hypotheses about where it may come from. Uh, and some of those, uh, here's one of them. So there is one hypothesis that it's, uh, it's, it's um, uh, the name ferment comes from fermento, which means wheat. And apparently uh, this is uh, a story from Italy. There was a, a man who had this kind of reddish and, and um, kind of wheatish colored beer. He was called fermenta and Fermento was apparently named after him. I can't go into too much more details about that, but it's very unlikely to be that name, as well as the next one. Um, there is a more um, classical link to uh, Friuli. So this is in northeast Italy. So this is Friuli Venezia Giulia today on the border of Slovenia. Um, there is, uh, or there was, a variety called Tokai Frulano. Uh, and this is now just called Frulano because Tokai has uh, been protected under EU legislation for Hungarian wines. Um, and there was the story that it's from here. That's why it's called Tokai Frulano, or it was called Tokai Frulano. But with DNA profiling, there is absolutely no genetic kinship to any other variety in this area. So it is definitely not from this, uh, this zone. Um, the one previously, the Fromento one, also, this was mentioned uh, later than the 16th and 17th documentations from Hungary, so it can be dispelled as well. So both of those are very much not uh, not true, but you will see it written a lot about Fromento or probably, probably Friuli, but it is a Hungarian variety. So therefore, I can't give you an actual definition on its etymology. I'm not exactly sure why we've got the name ferment uh, from Hungary. There are other people that say something to do with fermentations and so on as well, but we are not 100% sure on those. Um, but what we do know to further bolster the fact that it is Northeast Hungarian in origin is the amount of genetic diversity that we have up in that area. So in the Northeast of Hungary, around Tokai on the rivers like the Tijva and the Bogrog, we have um, four distinctive types, biotypes of ferment. 
So you have um, uh, Ferrer, which is a uh, um, very interesting white variety. La Gefretu, which is a loose bunched one. Piroche, pink berried. And then Valtojo, which is uh, the variable one. Um, so they have given these, uh, these quite uh, general names to these due to how they look or how they act. Um, so yeah, mightily important um, that we understand that that genetic diversity means that it really firmly is from the northeast of Hungary. Um, also, the first classification of vineyards in the world uh, occurs in Tokai in 1730 based on the geology, the aspect and sun exposure, uh, and then also the potential ability to develop Botrytis, the noble rot of the uh, of the um, of classic sweet wine production. So important that we, of course, have this big amount of history behind this very famous area. The ferment in the vineyard is an early budder, prone to spring frost. That's in fact on the next uh, the next one down, um, and it is a late ripener. But it can be picked at variable times, and that's really what gives quite a lot of diversity with ferment. If you hold it back, uh, sorry, if you if you bring it forward and pick it a bit earlier, um, you can in fact have remarkably very high acidity levels which work with traditional method sparkling. So ferment is made as a traditional method sparkling this area. Pick it a little bit later than that but still early and you'll make quite normally quite delicate appley pear citricky sort of styles and then you can then pick a little bit later which make more robust wines more rounded wines and of course you've got well into october and november for botrytis which makes the sweetest expressions so there is actually quite a long um a time of ripening a little bit like riesling which is often compared to um good drought tolerance which can be an issue sometimes in summers uh, in continental zones um, loose bunches of medium-sized berries, dependent though on the biotype. Um, uh, thick-skinned, so it is, uh, it's therefore ideal to botrytis. It actually has a really thick skin early on in its year. Uh, as it tends to ripen, the skin gets a little bit thinner, um, but it has this sort of almost like a secondary skin that is produced towards the end of the year. So botrytis is kept all at bay on the skins. And that botrytis, the amount of botrytis, which is very significant here, and why the vineyards were classified as far back as the 18th century, is due to the humidity, the moisture that is brought by the Bodrog and the Tishva River, which uh, run uh, and actually meet a confluence right next to Tokai. Uh, so it's very important. Of course, you've got the plains around there with very warm uh, sort of afternoon um, sunny days and autumnal days, but you have these lovely um, humid misty mornings, which are all the perfect storm for creating botrytis. Um, so therefore susceptible to that, of course, but also suffers with downy and powdery mildews uh, as well, either with humidity, without humidity. Um, and the soils, the geology, uh, Tokai is um, a varying amount of volcanic soils, which, uh, which are wonderful. It depends on exactly where within Tokai. Um, you know, there are some wonderful villages here around Madge and, uh, and, and around Tokai itself um, through up the valley. So you'll find a um, lovely amount of volcanic soils producing often uh, a little bit more of that herbaceous element in the whites. Uh, but in the sweet wines, you'll find minerality in them. Uh, so it's quite classic and at around uh, sort of around 400 450 meters uh, 1500 feet of, uh, of of altitude um the most famous drier styles will come from the match village um and that is uh, just to sort of the north uh, the northwest of tokai um so quite famous quite complex quite powerful quite rounded quite mineral laden styles in that uh, in that village and uh, as we already mentioned, pickings from early late create that complexity. Uh, so we've actually mentioned that at the start of this. Um, then in the winery, uh, ferment is certainly on its own as dry styles or medium styles. Off dry wines will be as a single varietal, um, but you will find it blended when it's a sweet. Um, not always, but uh, it could be blended with a couple of other varieties. So it is produced in the winery from dry to sweet. Uh, and sparkling and still. Um, noble rot is what is classified in Hungary as aju. So tokai aju means a nobly rotted tokai. Uh, and if it is one of those, that's when it can be blended with around, uh, around sort of five varieties 
uh, in uh, in that area. So uh, you will find uh, the varieties we have here are, um, of course, Hajivalu, uh, Saga Muscatole, which is your yellow muscat. There is a Zeta, which used to be called Remus, uh, which is actually a cross of ferment and Bouvier grapes. Uh, there is Covajolo, as well as Caba. Um, so there are um, quite a few others, but the famous three tend to be ferment, of course, at about 60 odd percent, uh, Hajivalu at about 30 odd percent, and then Saga Muscatoli, which is a couple, one or two percent, normally that your yellow muscat. Um, and, and that's normally a, a typical blending formula. Um, now, often it's uh, sort of colloquially been known as the winemaker's grape um, because, you know, you can produce very, very viticulturally geological terroir wines from it that you don't really need to manipulate or um, change in the winery. But you can do a lot to it. It's almost a little bit Chardonnay-esque or Chenin Blanc-esque in terms of the diversity in the winery. So you can find that uh, lees contact can be done and that gives more roundness. Malolactic conversion to really curb at least a proportion of its very, very intensive acidities can be done to add that sort of more creamy, buttery character. Oak, uh, certainly from around Zempleni, the forest, making these traditional gonch barrels uh, will will be used and that's for oxidation adding a little bit more um, secondary tertiary characters to the wine but you can make cleaner wines you know reductive wines in stainless steel or cement um, blending can be done of course uh, so there's quite a few things that winemakers can do to make this an interesting grape really it's remarkably diverse and really fascinating um, because it, it, it can speak of its place uh, geologically speaking, it can have a lot of terroir to the wine, loads of winemaking, and then dry to sweet and fizzy. So it's it's wonderful, really wonderful varietal. Um, now, just to talk a little bit about this, because um, studying this is often quite important for examinations. It is found in the WSET Level 3. So Level 3 students will find this slide very, very beneficial. Um, the Aju process, we're calling this. So that is your Tokai nobly rotted process. Harvest will typically begin around the end of October, but can, can be November, December, can even be into the new year. It completely depends on Mother Nature. And that is when we have uh, a fair amount of the noble rot uh, found across the varieties in the Tokai region to be harvested. So a picture of them is once again there on that slide. The Azu grapes. Now, traditionally, these grapes, as you can see in that picture, they're actually sort of almost um, ground into a paste, almost like a tapenade, um, the traditional way, this really thick paste. Um, the problem with that is that uh, it really exposes that sort of tapenade paste to the elements, things like bacterial spoilage, um, fruit flies, uh, volatile compounds can be produced because it's not being kept moist. Um, so this would actually be a bit of an issue. So they have um, adapted their production process as follows. So the Zhu grapes these days are actually then macerated. So no, no sort of uh, um, uh, sort of pasting of it, but they're macerated into a base wine. So we're talking about these grapes coming into the winery at the end of October, November. There is actually other har harvests of, of ferment which are picked earlier to make the dry styles. So they have made a base wine. OK, of dry ferment in grows the Aju berries uh, and they macerate in that base wine for around sort of one to three, four days, 12 to 60 hours. Uh, and of course, this is important for maceration uh, and leaching a flavor profile um, from the skins. Uh, so it's quite an important process. Um, we call this, um, this these grapes that then go into that, that's often called the Aju Dou. Um, so this is the um, uh, almost like the, uh, you know, all the skins. Uh, this is then pressed after the maceration and the resulting juice um, can be fermented a little bit. And the amount of the Aju berries that went into the base wine, so if you threw in more, will of course determine the final sweetness level. You put more in, the, the overall more sweetness you'll get. Even if there is a bit of a fermentation, there will still be plenty of sugar left behind. You put in less, of course, the, the amount of sugar in the final product will be lower. So that determines your sweetness level. 
Um, then the maturation. So once it is com completed as that wine, it will then go into um, what's called a gonch. Uh, that is a, a, Zem a Zembleni forest uh, oak barrel. And it will mature for, for years, sometimes several years, where that sweet wine will turn from being a golden color to a, a real ambery type color. Um, some of them are not aged too long, so they tend to be bottled a little bit golden. Um, but the typical amber color is due to that oxidation through this process, but then in, ba in bottle uh, as, uh, as well. This process of oxidation in barrel will, of course, create more secondary characteristics, vanilla, butterscotch, coconut, um, oaky based com compounds, but also tertiary notes of nuts, um, dried fruits uh, and so on. Um, and as of 2013, there are new laws um, that were created and the minimum level of sugar today for Tokai Aju is 120 grams per litre of sugar. And that is what is called a five putunyosh. Um, six putunyosh is 150, so 30 grams more per litre of sugar. Uh, putunyosh is actually this old basket which carries in all of these nobly rotted grapes that you've brought in from the uh, from the vineyard. So uh, five or six is basically to the numbers of these baskets you are using. You put more into it, of course, it will make a sweeter product. Um, so five butonyosh, six butonyosh. Um, there is also Tokai Essentia, sometimes called nectar. Uh, whereas five butonyosh was 120 grams per litre, six butonyosh is 150 grams per litre, Tokai Essentia is normally above 450 grams per liter. I'll re repeat that, 450 grams per liter of sugar. And some of them, five, six, 700 grams per liter. These are um, molasses, treacly sort of thickness, very viscous. They take decades to even develop small amounts of flavor. They ferment initially very slowly, and a lot of them are bottled at only around two to 3% alcohol. They have a very special dispensation from the EU which they can still call themselves a wine because normally a wine is above 5% alcohol, but this is two to 3% with bags of sugar, but they are still classified as wines. If you don't follow any of those laws and you maybe have less sugar, you have less aging, then these are often called late harvest tokais and won't have as much botrytis or have more passillage fruit, uh, ripened berries. So that's less sugar, maybe 60 grams, 90 grams. So you can get tokai late harvest styles uh, as well. So where do we find the ferment variety? 97, 96% of it is in the Tokai part of Hungary in northeast Hungary. This is, uh, this is around nearly 4,000 hectares of vine, so mainly up here. Um, there is a bit of Tokai, uh, sorry, ferment also outside of Hungary in Slovenia, Croatia, and a few other bits and bobs. Austria has some as well. Um, but really, it is all about this, um, this one region. So it's really special. Um, you have a number of villages which are quite famous, uh, Maj, which is, uh, we mentioned already, which is just to the north uh, west. Uh, so I've actually got my pointer here down on Tokai. Go around the nice big hill here following the Tishva River and you come up here to Maj. Then you have uh, Ratka as well and Toshva as well, which is in that middle area. Famous villages for, for drier styles as well as having some sweet productions uh, as well. The sweet production mainly around Tokai itself. Um, so, yeah, there's some famous names for you for the, uh, for the, for the ferment variety for the Tokai wine region. So what it tastes like um, now... In this picture, you've got a number of things going on. Uh, in the middle, holding the centerpieces, stones. And stones uh, are representing really the minerality that can be found across the board in Tokai wines and therefore ferment wines. Um, that's due to the uh, wonderfully high acidity that we find in ferments. So it's wonderful. Um, the dry styles will tend to have this kind of apple pear and citric character in the background. Um, and that's uh, that can be anything. They can be a bit riper as well. You can often find a bit of peach and even mango in the dry styles, uh, depending on their production methods and how early or late they pick. 
but SIDities still tend to be remarkably high across the board. Um, and then the sweet expressions, be it late harvest or tokaya ju, will have things like mango, pineapple, and then towards the dried fruits, dried apricots, dried mango, because of the oxidative process that those wines go through. They're in oak barrels, so expect oak-based characteristics. Honey, uh, of course, and floral notes, maybe acacia. I often find gingerbread and doughy characters as well. And once you know that they call it the ajou dough, that process when they macerate the grapes within base wine, you understand that there will be some of those characters in the in the wine as well. Um, dry to sweet, of course, dependent and very high acidity across the board, depending on what style you are looking at. So thank you so much for your time. I hope you've learned a little bit about the grape variety ferment and specifically about the very famous style it makes, which is Tokai Aju, your nobly rotted style. Um, I've been Jimmy Smith uh, at Wine with Jimmy and my two wine schools, West London Wine School, South London Wine School, and then, of course, Streatham Wine House, which is my wonderful, cool, fun, funky, laid back wine bar in South uh, London. Please come and see us for a class or a glass next time you're in London. Thank you so much for your time and attention. I hope you've learned something and I'll see you again very soon. Goodbye.